Hi, I'm STS-130 flight engineer Steve Robinson, and you're watching NASA TV. Good morning to you today, Kay. Good morning, Houston, and thanks for that music. That song is very appropriate today, performed by fellow Mobile, Alabama native Jimmy Buffett, and on a day that uh, we'll be working on opening our new window in the world, performing EVA number three here on the International Space Station and the Space Shuttle Endeavor. And we certainly agree with you, uh, Kay. We're all looking forward to that. Today's wake-up music for the astronauts on board Shuttle Endeavor, song Window on the World by Jimmy Buffett, played for mission specialist Kay Heyer. As the crew members move into preparations for the third of three planned spacewalks on the shuttle mission STS-130, planning to finish up the connections of the new Tranquility module and the Cupola module. And as Heyer noted, open up the uh, windows on the station's new observation deck for the first time. This is inside the station's Quest airlock where the spacewalkers are getting prepared for the mission's third and final spacewalk. Astronauts Bob Behnken and Nicholas Patrick are conducting this uh, spacewalk as they have the first two. Shuttle Commander George Zamka is also in view here inside the Quest airlock along with Station Flight Engineer TJ Creamer to assist the crew members in preparation for the spacewalk. Creamer and Zamka will assist the crew members with getting into their spacesuits. The crew members have now worn the oxygen masks for long enough in this pre-breathe procedure. So astronauts Bob Behnken and Nicholas Patrick are removing those inside the station's Quest airlock, which is at a reduced pressure of 10.2 pounds per square inch compared to the 14.7 psi of the rest of the station. Behnken and Patrick will continue the external outfitting of the new elements delivered to the station by Endeavour's crew, the Node 3 cupola, the Node 3 Tranquility and its cupola including additional fluid and cable routing on the outside of Tranquility to lead to the new location of the pressurized mating adapter number three that was uh, positioned onto Tranquility and removing the thermal covers on the cupola. Spacewalkers Nicholas Patrick and Bob Behnken are in their suits. We can see Patrick here being maneuvered by uh, Shuttle Commander George Zamka and uh, station flight engineer T.J. Creamer will help with uh, putting on the SAFER, the Simplified Aid for EVA or Extravehicular Activity Rescue. Spacewalker Bob Behnken is in his suit and just out of view below th where this camera is set up in the airlock. And uh, George, 
The EV hatch is open and latched. Okay, copy. EV hatch open and stowed. I'm going to take the emergency MPEV to close. Bob, I heard you say... Astronaut Nicholas Patrick now ready to come out the hatch of the Quest Air Lock. That's affirmative, Steve. I'll close the lock onto the forward UIA D-ring. This is a view from the helmet camera on astronaut Nicholas Patrick's spacesuit. The number 18 in the lower right corner will identify that view throughout the spacewalk as the uh, camera on his suit. And this is a view from astronaut Bob Benkin's camera on his helmet as he is getting ready to come out the airlock after passing some bags of equipment out to astronaut Nicholas Patrick to pre-position on the outside of the airlock. Yeah, thermal cover is closed. Bob, you are headed by the forward route uh, to the headrail 600. Copy that, Steve. Yeah, you can go, uh, go Nader when you hit node 3, go Zenith up to the Nick Patrick Highway there, and it's a short one. And that's where you'll throw the OIH bag. Gotcha. Nick, you're heading out to the end of the port end of PMA 3. And Steve, I copy that. We'll take the aft route for a change, and uh, we'll stop by the Node 3 starboard end cone, and I've got a handrail for you when you get out there. Here I go by the aft route, Steve. Astronauts Nicholas Patrick and Bob Benkin are moving on to their work sites for the beginning of the spacewalk, having set up the n initial uh, tool configurations outside of the Quest airlock. Benkin is moving to the area to open the quick disconnects on the umbilicals that are connecting the redundant uh, loops of the ammonia thermal control system to uh, allow the ammonia to flow through those loops. The primary system was activated during the mission's second spacewalk. And Patrick is moving also uh, around uh, Tranquility to make cable connections for the pressurized mating adapter number three that is now attached to Tranquility. Okay, Steve, uh, booties three and four are installed. Excellent. With that, you can close the hood. Astronaut Bob Benkin has completed opening the quick disconnects on the lab side, the Destiny lab side of these ammonia lines for Tranquility, and he will move to the uh, other side of the lines on Tranquility to open those as well to activate uh, this redundant system for the external thermal control system for Tranquility. This uh, video is from the helmet camera on astronaut Bob Benkin's spacesuit. And while in the area, he is securing some of the thermal covers around the ammonia lines. Astronaut Nicholas Patrick is working on cabling for the pressurized mating adapter number three. We see his helmet cam view here. He is uh, disconnecting some brackets and uh, releasing cables from the adapter so they can be uh, plugged into Tranquility. For confirmation, please. I'm leaving F1 bolted in. That's affirmative. That's the right thing to do. Great. F2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, hey, eight, Jeff. Eight in the middle now there's uh, four cable connectors at the dummy panel, and they all have booty. Roger that. And remember, when you put the dust caps on, on those two, 603 and 608, they'll need the booties back on. Thank you. And all TA clamps are released and reclosed and headed up to the dummy panel. Thank you, Nick. 
Astronaut Bob Benkin has uh, completed securing those thermal covers in place for the ammonia lines and is going over to the other end of the lines to open the quick disconnects on the uh, tranquility side. I don't know if you can look at camera nine, Steve, at all and see anything on the uh, Kind of the status of uh, how push down the uh, MLI there is. We'll work on that. Steve, I'm uh, headed up with the cable bunch. That's great, Dick. You got that, uh, got that 603 off, okay? Yeah, the, the uh, 602 and 603, the uh, connectors were very hard to demate, but they're done. Very good. And, and the dust cap uh, is on 603 plus booty? I will, uh, the booty's alone, I'll do the dust caps up here at uh, Zenith. Oh, that's right. Thanks. These spacewalkers have completed their tasks with the setup of the systems for tranquility. Later, they will install some handrails and worksite interfaces for uh, future spacewalkers on the outside of the element. These spacewalkers have joined each other near the cupola to begin removing the insulation from the outside of that element. The cupola is uh, three meters in diameter, or about 9.8 feet, and one and a half meters high, or about 4.7 feet. Once the insulation is removed and bolts securing the window shutters in place are taken out, the crew inside Cupola can check out the window shutters. Once the crew members remove the insulation covers, Patrick will be the one to release the three bolts on each of the window shutters for the seven windows while Benkin moves on to install some equipment on the outside of Tranquility to help future spacewalkers, such as uh, handrails and worksite uh, interface uh, connectors. You can get to work on the, your side of the ground faster, expect 12 turns each. Right to that. Am I at those PGT settings a second time? Next you. you bet. Alpha 5, counter 2. Alpha 5, counter 2, thank you. Okay, see the uh, bag is secure on the uh, top of the cupola. I'm gonna do on a glove inspection first before yeah, I get it tethered. Okay, get the uh, MLI tethered. Okay, cover one, bolt one is released. Sorry, right, cover one, bolt two, released. Okay, cover one, bolt two, got it, thanks Bob. Cover four, bolt one released. Nick, you cut out a little bit. I, I copied uh, cover four. Cover four, bolt one released. Copy. Cover four, bolt one. Excellent. Got some really neat views of you uh, both working around the cupola. Oh, thank you. These spacewalkers are now working on removing the insulation covers. They are ready inside the bag. Thank you. These spacewalkers will work together to roll up and fold up each of the covers into uh, two separate assemblies that will be uh, bagged up into a, a bag that the crew members brought out of the hatch of the uh, Quest airlock with them. This is a view from the helmet camera on astronaut Bob Benkin's spacesuit as he's working to roll up one of the panels for the insulation covers on the outside of the cupola.
The crew members have completed removing the insulation covers from the outside of the cupola. This view on the outside of the station of the spacewalkers as the vehicle passes over the Earth into an orbital sunrise over London. That's about 10 pounds of MLI in and an ACOM bag. Terrific job pulling that up. You guys made that look easy. I don't know about easy. Thanks. It, it wasn't, but thank you. Now we've got to, about to have Cupola have its first full orbital sunrise, and its gleaming metal looks terrific. Spacewalkers Bob Banken on the left and Nicholas Patrick on the right working on the outside of the new Tranquility node and Cupola. Patrick is removing bolts that uh, held the shutters on the cupola's windows in place, and Banken is working on installing worksite interfaces and handrails for future spacewalkers to use. This is a view from the helmet camera on astronaut Nicholas Patrick's spacesuit, watching him remove the final bolt holding the uh, window shutters in place. Checks off my uh, matrix of uh, onslaught bolts. Also, these bolts did not work exactly as they did in the MBL. I'm just going to do a, a quick. They didn't pop completely free um, until you get the third one. So I'm just going to do a quick survey around the cupola here and make sure that I really drove all of them. Okay, that sounds good, and uh, looks like you're doing a great job keeping your safety tether in your uh, in your field of regard. Thank you. And Houston likes that plan. Steve, I'm now 10 feet from all windows. Copy that. If you need to come closer than that, uh, do let me know. But. I think for your further movements, you do not need to. Do you concur? Um, I concur, yes. Okay, and Bob, the windows number two and three, the station forward windows, are the ones closest to your side. We'll make sure we keep those closed. Okay. The crew members on board the International Space Station and Space Shuttle Endeavor have coordinated the spacewalkers' uh, locations and opening the first shutter on the cupola window number seven, the circular window on the top. I see it opening. As expected, the uh, view through window seven is absolutely spectacular. This has to be the largest window on board, and uh, when we have the others around it open, it will give us a, a view of the entire globe. Absolutely incredible. Window shutter number seven being closed by the turn of a knob from inside cupola. We can see the two crew members working together, astronaut Bob Banken in the suit with the red stripes around the legs and astronaut Nicholas Patrick with him. Their task uh, together is to route some cabling on the outside of the station for the uh, video uh, signal converter that uh, helps with the uh, video cameras on the space station's robotic arm. The crew inside the International Space Station shutting the cover on window number three on the cupola now. Only a one shutter remaining to be tested, number two. And there, uh, shutter number two, the last uh, window covering to be tested on the cupola is opening. 
The uh, crew members inside Cupola open the shutters by the turn of a knob. Crew members uh, visible in the window looking out of the cupola. The side of the cupola with the window open faces forward on the International Space Station. Mission Specialist Bob Mankey making his way back inside the Quest airlock. The addition of the Tranquility node and the cupola addition to Tranquility mark the 98% complete point for the International Space Station. And with the work done to, uh, during today's spacewalk, um, setting up the final ammonia cooling line for Tranquility and the heater cables for the pressurized mating adapter, that marks actually the completion of the external thermal control system for the International Space Station. the crew getting some video. Pilot Terry Virts there, the cameraman. Virts has been uh, working to install panels to cover up the uh, wires and cables that the crew has been connecting and, and outfitting today. Degrees. It's amazing. You can see the thickness of the atmosphere. You can see the clouds coming and going, the continents coming and going. Nick, we're getting ready to go out the hatch here for the third spacewalk and the final spacewalk. Today was a little different. Nick was the first one out the hatch. Here are Bob and I being put into the station airlock in preparation for the EVA. I'm already in head first, and there's Bob waving. He's uh, going to be put in second. I'm going to open the hatch today, and Bob's going to uh, operate the uh, control panel for the airlock. Our two uh, suit-up experts were T.J. Creamer, seen here, and our commander, George Zamka. And they got us out the door in, uh, I think, record time for this mission and in really great shape to do our last EVA. Here you can see T.J. and George just off the left of the screen putting the SAFER, that's the Simplified Aid for EV EVA Rescue, on Bob's uh, backpack, his place. And this is the little rocket pack that, if you were ever to drift free of station and your safety tether were to be broken, would fly you back uh, to, uh, to so you'd grab onto the station and come home. Because if you were to drift away, there'd be nothing to uh, uh, nothing to come get you. Station can't move around the sky the way shuttle can. There's George on the left. On goes Safer, and the next thing will be Bob going feet first into the airlock. Really, uh, in terms of EVA preparation, one of the easier times for the EV crew member because you don't have to do anything. You just hang on to a handrail and uh, somebody else does all the hard work, as you can see. And Terry's reminding me that ends really soon. Once you're out of the airlock hatch, it's uh, all hard work. And in goes Bob. And you can see Bob's still on an umbilical so that we don't deplete our uh, oxygen tanks while we're waiting to go out the airlock. We wear an umbilical till the last moment to bring us oxygen straight from the station. TJ on the right there is an uh, Army helicopter pilot, very experienced helicopter pilot. And George, back in the distance in the blue shirt, is a Navy fighter pilot. Uh, I'm sorry, a Marine fighter pilot. So. George is a marine fighter pilot, so uh, we are in very, very experienced hands as we get put in the airlock. Here's TJ closing the inside. 
inside hatch. And this is uh, not too long before we'll depress the airlock and open the outside hatch to begin the EVA. Oleg on the right in the Russian in the red shirt is a Russian cosmonaut here on the International Space Station. Oh, this does give us a lot more access without that red bar. Okay, here we are back in the cupola. Um, Kay and I were there um, most, most of the day. Um, been doing various, conne various connections and uh, fittings, and, and basically it's called module outfitting, getting the cupola ready for a, its permanent life here on the space station. up some water lines and there's really, really tight connections and a very hard, very high torque that you have to do. So there are special tools that we have. They're pretty tough to get fit on there. So we spent a couple hours getting these, uh, these different connections hooked up. And uh, um, the person in the green shirt there is an Air Force pilot. Just to be clear. <laughs> and uh, here is the view from the cupola pre-window. Opening and, the, and the, during the spacewalk, Bob and Nick, one of their tasks was to go out and remove some launch bolts that held the windows in place. So until they did that, we could not open up the windows. And here's a view of Stevie Ray Robinson, um, a civilian pilot, and he, he was busy. He spent most of his day in the cupola and those three turning wrenches and, and doing various tasks that we had. Along with us was Jeff Williams, and he was really kind of the bedrock for everything that we did. He's an expert on the station. He's very efficient. He's been really helping us get everything done. Kay is putting together a, uh, uh, one of our boxes. It's called an ATU. It's the communications box. And that those two hoses were water lines that are used to cool it. So that was a, one of our tasks today. Here's a view from the docking compartment. You can see the several robotic arms, a shuttle arm and the station arm. And there, on the cupola, you can see Nick Patrick doing his work. So this is a, just a wonderful view that they have from the Russian module. It's called the docking compartment. And uh, you can see him doing work there. And Nick's floating up to take a look at this. He hasn't seen this yet. These launch locks were, were a lot of fun. There were 21 bolts. Um, they, uh, some of them were stiffer than expected, but uh, I think it took the best part of an hour to un back them all out. And as soon as I did, the, the window shutters were visibly loosened. Um, the windows were opened a few minutes later. Okay, and this was the funnest part of the day. Um, one of our tasks was to do a window check. And uh, you can see Kay and I in there, and that's window seven. That's the window that looks straight down. So you can see we open it up and we just closed it. And uh, it was a real honor to get to be uh, one of the first, the first people in there to open up the window. We had to coordinate with Bob and Nick to, to be sure that they were complete with their tasks and that they were not uh, in the way. And so there was a little bit of coordination between us and the shuttle, which is where Stevie Ray and Zembo were uh, conducting the spacewalk and the ground where they were tracking things also. So that was, uh, that was fun. It was a good example of how we coordinate between station shuttle and the station control room on the ground in Houston and also the shuttle control room on the ground in Houston. There's a lot of people doing a lot of work for this mission. And there, Kay just was the first person to open that window, and she's taking a look outside. Jeff Williams down, he's going to help us out.
this uh, camera was, uh, as you can tell, it was pointed later, and a lot of us uh, uh, either bumped into it or, or uh, didn't even know it was there, just because uh, one of the things with a cupola in its orientation is it's uh, it's just you, you, you've got to flip over in order to be heads up in the cupola, which can confuse you for a little bit. So here are views from inside the cupola looking out. We've got several of these, uh, but uh, uh, just witnessed a spectacular uh, sunset from Cupola. And one thing that, that uh, unlike a flat window or a paned window, when you have a uh, hemispheric window, you don't have to have your face right up there. You can actually back up and, and uh, just take in the whole view. But uh, you can pretty much see the whole Earth uh, out that window. We've got more coming. This is uh, the conclusion of the EVA, and uh, we'll let this go for a while. But this this is uh, Bob Benkin coming on in, and uh, you can tell that there is a mass of bags. Uh, that front bag, I believe, was the, the MRI from the cupola that was uh, coming in. And Bob, of course, comes in head first. And uh, Nick was outside, and Nick was handing him more bags. So this is kind of like packing for a for a vacation, uh, you know, in a Volkswagen Beetle, you know, it's just, just very limited volume uh, to put your stuff in, and of course, uh, the, the spacewalk, we still have one spacewalker to go, and he is going to come in feet first. And so, uh, this was, uh, I was filming this, uh, and so it, it took a little while to, to get Nick up there, but you'll see his feet coming up there shortly, and then the two are, uh, they're, well, no, it's another bag. The two are in their kind of reverse uh, attitude, and uh, Nick's job today was to close the hatch. Closing the hatch is crucial. Without that, you can't repressurize the airlock and then come in. In fact, without that, they won't let you in because there will be a hole in the airlock, a really big hole. Uh, the hatch is hard because it swings into the airlock before you can lower it into the, what effectively is the airlock floor. And I think there you can just see uh, me coming in, feet first, through that hatch uh, opening. And right before you close the hatch, you have to close the, the thermal cover. It's like a piece of MLI that, that uh, keeps, the, uh, keeps the temperature of the hatch itself under control. All these things are actually quite difficult, and this was the first spacewalk in which I operated the hatch on uh, spacewalks one and two that have been done by our EV-1, Bob Benkin, whom you see right there through the uh, hatch window this time. This was the end of the EVA, and we were, I think we were fairly tired, end of the third EVA. Feeling, Mike, if uh, when you're Capcoming here and there's there's folks up here, if you can't find them, I would I would look in the cupola because there's going to be a lot of folks enjoying time in there. That makes sense. We wish we were there too. That view right there, I had a chance to see Bob and Nick go in uh, right at the end of their EVA when they were clear. We opened up the window and had a chance to see them do their last ingress into the airlock. The airlock's just on the other side of those tanks sticking up. And we're getting good video down here.
Looks great. Excellent. Okay, I, I don't think this uh, bears too much narration, other than it, it's uh, really neat to stick your head out and look at the station. Uh, you can see uh, the progress, the soils. You can see it right in the payload bay of Endeavour. Uh, you can see both robotic arms, the truss. Uh, you you really get a sense that there's a, a whole big station around you, um, which is which is really neat. into the window of uh, the docking compartment. Uh, now, we tried to get some video of, of uh, somebody waving in there, but uh, uh, the sun just provided too much of a reflection. Here, Terry's getting a good good shot of the, uh, of the moon. Uh, looking out to the cupola that struck me right away is that you don't get a view like that anywhere else other than EVA. And in some ways, it can be even better, better less, restriction, uh, less restricting than being inside that helmet. For instance, in the EMU, you can't really look up at all, and you're quite restricted left and right also. And here's a 360 degrees around and up and all squashed in with the rest of your crew. So there's, uh, there's some elements that are like the EVA and some, some that are maybe even better. See, that sounds awesome. Unfortunately, we've lost the signal for those last little bit of it. If you can uh, hit pause and rewind a little bit. Mike, that was the end of our flight day highlights, and here is a, okay. um, Zambo gave me a tape, and I just did a 360-degree tour, so I think narration will just detract from creation there. I'll let you guys watch. Okay, we're getting a good uh, downlink again. Thanks. resemblance to the SPS-130 patch there. We're just missing your, uh, your little faces in there. It would be perfect. <laughs> they're, not, they're not so little or perfect, but uh, I'll, I'll predict that you, hopefully you might see a picture like that before we land. Sounds good. in there. That's the docking compartment, but it was hard to see because the uh, sunlight was reflecting. So then I flipped it around and, and tried to give a, this is the attitude that we would have, um, thinking that the earth was down below us. So I just flipped the camera over to give you a different perspective. It really is a different perspective. Everywhere in station, it's easy to rotate yourself, give yourself a few seconds, and then you can convince yourself of your new up and down orientation. But in, in cupola, it's really hard to do that because the earth is below you, and you always have a sense that that's down. So that's the only place I found it impossible to get a sense of uh, that whenever you open your pocket in there, you feel like something's going to fall out of it. Um, but of course it doesn't, it just floats there. So it's, that's interesting.
had the crew members moving in there to see the window opening. That's Commander George Zamka and uh, just motioning in Mission Specialist K Hire as well. Cupola here will eventually be the home of a robotic workstation that will allow the teams uh, controlling the space station robotic arm a real-time view of what's going on outside the station rather than just relying on video views as they currently do.